Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women, welcome to Tuna Commander J.R. Kupukwa Chesson Talk Show. We wake up on this beautiful Tuesday morning, December 21st, 2021. We rise the news that we'll be 
hearing from the president today sometime addressing the COVID-19 situation, this new variant, Omicron. We know that right now it is the dominant variant of the COVID-19 virus in America. We know that 61% of Americans are vaccinated. 18% have had the booster vaccine. And for those who are not vaccinated, take heed and govern yourselves. Because reports have it that you are at risk. You are the most likely to die. Take heed and govern yourselves. If you care about your lives, make sure you get your vaccination. Now, I was listening to CNN this morning and a doctor was talking about the five significant things that we need to take account of to stay safe from this COVID-19 because we know we're gonna be living with COVID-19 for a long time. One variant or another. We thought it was going to go away. Well, apparently the disease, this disease or virus have no, has no intention of going away. It keeps mutating from one level to another. Now, yeah, we are with Omicron. The African, the African variant. Okay, so the five um, points the doctor recommended that we need to take into consideration and pay significant attention to our one vaccination. The more we get vaccine vaccinated, the safer we are. The more we get vaccinated, the more we're protected we are. So that's the first thing, vaccination. Second, mandates. We know that people will not adhere to wearing the mask if we just leave it like that. So it has become important that mandates be put in place, that people be forced and compelled to wear the mask for the safety of all of us. The third thing is testing. It's very important because people are traveling, people are communing together. We have to ensure that everybody is safe. Now people are suggesting that we wear the KN95 mask, those masks with the, those, those technical masks with the, you see all the hazmat people wearing. People are suggesting that we start wearing that because we need to be better ventilated and protected from what's in the atmosphere. So, I don't know how many people can afford those masks. I don't know whether they will be giving it out free. Right now they're talking about testings being sent out free. Some states are giving it out free. Some countries are giving it out free to their people. In America, we want to know whether it's going to be given out free. So this is where we are on testing. And the final thing he talked about is the approved drugs that are coming out from the FDA, okay? I don't know what they are besides the vaccine, but take heed and govern yourselves, pay attention to the news. We know that just yesterday, 253,000 people died. I mean, we had 253 cases of COVID-19, they didn't die, correction. They were just cases, okay? I told you that Omicron is now the, the dominant variant 
of the COVID-19. So this is where we are with the news. Also, the, those missionaries that were kidnapped in Haiti, they have escaped. Twelve of them broke out of their wherever they were kept in and ran to safety. So the news has it that all of the missionaries that were kidnapped in Haiti are now free. Okay, so let me get into my news for this for my lesson for this day. Today's topics are can the African Union help Liberia and Liberians? Two. Liberia in crisis. Three, rise patriots. So we see, I was watching uh, across Africa this morning and saw the Ghanaian president there addressing the UN or some international body. And um, after he got through the commentator Lofa Julius and people who were calling in were talking about Ghana and the impact of the president on that continent, on, on his people and country. And this brought me to the whole thing about the impact of the African Union on Africa and African nations, especially my country, Liberia. We see that from time immemorial, African countries have been left to fend on their own. And nothing wrong with that. We are all independent nations. But when we come to the African Union, I have grave concern with the African Union because all these African nations, despite their so-called independence, are all members of foreign commonwealths. And despite their independence, they owe their allegiance to the commonwealth greater than they owe it to their own selves as independence, an independent nation. Because despite their independence, they have to go along with what is in the best interest of the commonwealth. And the commonwealth is a colonial system. It's a colonial entity from slavery. And we know that some of these African nations are still paying treaties to their Commonwealth masters. So for my country and for Africa, it begs the question, how free are we? To what extent can we exercise our own rights as Africans for our own benefits on the continent, for our people, without the interference of the Commonwealth masters of our other African brothers and sisters? How does this relationship benefit me and my people? of the West African Republic of Liberia, sharing in this union with other Africans that have allegiances to nations not of the African continent. These are concerns. These are grave concerns because we look at, across the continent, the wealth and resources of the African nations are still being exploited by their commonwealth masters. Many of the nations of the African Union are still impoverished, lacking direction, good leadership, good systems for their people. Many of the nations of the African Union are impoverished nations and people. And 
we still owe our allegiances to nations that are not of the African continent or our superior nations of the Western world and Eastern world. So how can we survive as independent nations and people seeking to compete with other nations of the world who are our masters? But my concern is my country because other nations have other educated people too, have other knowledgeable people far better than me, far advanced than me. But I just want to know how my people will benefit from all this. You know, we can make all the speeches. We can have all the good intentions. But we don't control the wealth of the world. Look at Ghana. Even with all the good intention of the president, he still got to ask the Western world to give us access, access to Western markets. Because if we don't have access to it, we can have all the development in Africa. It would just stay right in Africa. It would just stay right in Africa and with the same influence of the Commonwealth nations, our own nation will not support our own interests. Because why? They are not African nations. They are Commonwealth nations. And they owe their allegiances, allegiances to nations that are not of the African continent. So my only question is, can the African Union help Liberia and Liberian people? That's my only concern. And to what extent? To what extent has the ECOWAS been of help to Liberia? Because this is the closest uh, uh, organization of Africans right within the region that we exist in. And right here, we have problems within ourselves because of the same Commonwealth interests and alliances and allegiances that have us divided. Have one some nations rich and some nation poor. Some nations more exploited than other nations. I don't need to get in other people's problem. I don't need to put my foot in other African nations' problem because everybody got their own issues, everybody got their own leaders, everybody got their own people. But I just want to know how can you people help my people when we are so divided on the international front, divided. On the, domestic, on the domestic front. Is there interest there for me? I just want to know. Okay? So that's that's my just my take on this. I was just throwing this in there for my lesson for the day, you know, because uh, I heard this and uh, Dofa was so, Dofa Julius was so interested in this international affair with the Ghanaian person fell in love with him so much. So I said, well, let me just throw this jab in there. Let's see where we can go with this. And let, let's debate this. Maybe some of my boys not thinking about this thing, you know. So let me just throw this in there. Let's think about it. Okay? But I don't want to step on nobody's toes in Ghana, Nigeria, and all you other common with people. Okay? Please. I'm not here for your common with bullshit. <laughs> I just threw that in there, okay? So I can know what my people saying. Okay, so let me just take a break and I'll move on to my next topic. Thank you, 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 thank you. We always in crisis. We never are a crisis. We stand in there on crisis, crisis, crisis. We just, 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 just stand on crisis. Look behind me. Look at my board. Gongolo won the U.S. 
to put sanction on McGill because McGill selling votes. <laughs> the zoos divided. They don't know whether to strike or to protest or to stay home because of some of the fun. Uh, uh, yeah, some of the LDC, France, Lassana Brown said the LDC, LCC lie on her. She didn't say something, they say something, they say, they say, they say something she didn't say. Then the other white American behind me, yeah, he been sending new pictures to Liberian girls. Now he busted, he committed suicide. So this is where we are with the mess in Liberia today. Then the news came out today that the UP people finished voting unanimously to come out of CPP. I told you the CPP thing was a dysfunctional, another dysfunctional bullshit. Now yeah, yeah. CPP say UP unanimously say they won't come out of the CPP. But there was no way the CPP can survive in peace. How we survive in peace? The only quiet person there now that Ben and I, Ben and I is the only quiet person sitting down there watching the whole show, eating his chicken, chicken on, on his farm there. What, what do you call his farm? Eating his little chicken on his farm there. With all the little boys from Kiris boy just sitting around and then just on the pot, just, just eating the thing and just looking at everything, just talking. Say, oh, look at nobody. Oh, look at, look at Darius Dale on that other pump. He, he, he acting like he's sucking a big man. And yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting all that money now. He go sit down there and let Pelitic go take the party for him, suspend him. Suspend your <laughs> suspend your man. There are the Musa Belichick didn't capture the people party, my man. Say we're going by the constitution. You useless people, you are just sit down here. You don't want to pay dues. You don't want to do nothing. You just think you can get come here and, and won't be big shot and just spread your wings and come talking. You don't pay dues. We suspend you. Bah! We suspend you normally. Bah! We suspend Daryl Dillon. Now Daryl Dillon is house talking bullshit. And he's suspended. He's suspended. So, with ability of wielding such power in, 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 in Liberty Party, Ellen Cummings still hanging on the fence from his forgery shit. UP has finally decided that they're going to hang up the, the jersey and pull out of the collaborating party shit. So when they pull out, is this body dissolved? But they haven't finalized it yet because this was just a proposal by all the other people, the senators. The representative, the party members, the, the groups, all of them send their resolution, the uh, recommendation in saying that they should dissolve the CPP or they should pull out of the CPP and let the ENC and the Liberty Party have their day together. But this is where we are, you know, on that issue. So if they do dissolve, we'll hear about it sooner or later, okay? Now, the big thing in Liberia right now is about this Chucky Taylor interview that Henry Costa had yesterday or sometime. Chucky Taylor is the son of Charles Taylor by a Jamaican woman. Chucky Taylor never had any roots in Liberia. He was not raised in Liberia. He was not born in Liberia. He was not educated in Liberia. He had no connections. He himself said it. He said his mom was a Jamaican woman. So I still had an affair with him. Had him. He neglect, neglected the boy. So when he became president, the boy came back looking for his father. Came to Liberia and just 
So the opportunity to take advantage of his power position and power and money and everything. And he just did that. And while doing that, he committed some serious atrocities against people. Now, yeah, he is 797 years in the federal prison somewhere in America, calling to apologize to Liberians for the mess he did. The people he killed, this boy did some shit in Liberia. He killed people, he beat people, the boy did all kind of evil thing. You know? Now he coming back to apologize, say people fool him and all of that. You know, these people that all in discipline, their children come here and do anything they want to do. See, the way Ellen Johnson said they put her children in power. You know, this is the nepotistic thing that been killing our country. So he came and wreaked havoc in the country. Now he in jail for 97 years. His whole life is on hold. Costa interviewing him. I don't know what Costa interviewing him for. Maybe Costa won't try to get him out of jail too. Try to help to use his platform to get out of jail. But hey, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. And if you're a good kid, you're a good kid. You're a bad kid, you're a bad kid. You do bad things. And that'll happen. You did bad things. So with me, I have no problem accepting his apology. Talking to Taylor ain't do nothing to me. So as I said yesterday, he took me apologize to me. He should apologize to the people that he hurt. The Liberian people that know him. And when they hear his name, they want revenge. Some of them won't cry because of what he did to them. Some of them want to run because they fear his name. So this is where we are with this Chucky Taylor business. Excuse me, I just yawning. Uh, I had a good day last night. You know, it's been up reading the news, all this good stuff on Liberia just behind me. And I can't sleep, so just kiss the yawning. But anyway, that's it. With Chucky Taylor. So Casa is a interviewing two two days from now at the ball or something to hear what Chucky Taylor got to say to us. All I want to know if does he have any information of the criminals in Liberia's government today that we can go after for our money? Does he know any one of them that he can help us with? Or does he have any pertinent information that can lead us to get our money back from these criminals? Should us mind take on that? Okay? Let me take my coffee break. Then I'll come back with my last topic so I can go. I'm yawning too much. I need to take a break. I need to take a break. I need to take a break. A serious, 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 serious break. Lies, patriots, lies. Our country is in a mess. Our country is in a mess. I heard the same lo fi them talking about how Ghana is developing today because the diaspora Ghanaians have returned home. They are bringing their wealth, they are bringing their ideals, they are bringing their discipline. They are bringing all the good things they got from the diaspora back to their country. And their country is booming. Booming. Why can't that happen to Liberia? Why? Why? First of all, some of the Ghanaians go, the Ghanaians have achieved a lot in America. They have achieved a lot. 
Because right in Rhode Island, you, when you go to some of these big businesses and hospitals and things like that, you see Ghanaians in there. Just like Liberians, some Liberians. But you see Ghanaians. You see them running stuff too. So these guys have made it, man. And they go home to contribute. Can, not, can we see the same of the Liberian people? Have majority of our people made it? Where we can go home and invest and diffuse our people in the community and know that they will add to the community and the society and help it grow and develop in a positive way? Can we say that about our people? Or have we bred only criminals and rogues here too? So going home is of no real significance to the diaspora Liberians. <clears throat> It's a challenge. It's a challenge. So when we just do decide to go home in mass to participate in our nation's development and progress and advancement, we'll be able to better evaluate our people that way to see what they have brought from America, what they have brought from this great land to infuse into our society to help our people back home grow and prosper. We see because we gotta see it. That's the only way we evaluate it to what extent can our people in the diaspora be of be assets to our nations in Africa? <clears throat> okay, so we see Ghana example. We see all the Ghanaians returning home. Participating in the country, building that they haven't built the economy. Now they're looking for a world market now. They're not worried about domestic issues no more that they were getting from foreigners no more. They, 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 they're investing in these things at home now. So they need to find international market. And that's what the president is going out asking for. What can we say about the rest of us? What can we say about the rest of us participating in this world market? Right now, we can't say nothing. We can't say nothing. But it's up to us to change our future, to change our destiny, to change our direction. That's all we need patriots to rise up to stand up and take the helm of the leadership of our country and direct us in different directions that will lead us to positive development and growth and progress and advancement and upliftment. We need help. We can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. The fuck preacher can't lead us. These people have failed us. That feel us. So we need charitable people people who care for other people to step to the plate and help move our country forward. Set up programs and plans that are non governmental headed by Liberians ourselves, for our people and our society, because we can't depend on the useless government officials and these people. We got to take our country away from that government mentality to a more private sector, social oriented society to care about our people and the progress and the fastness. The time when the people is now. We need patriots to rise up. Let's sit down, put our heads together, tete a tete, put our head together, head to head, make some sense of all this mess. The time of the people is now. My class is done. Have a good day. I talk to you tomorrow. In the cause of the people, the struggle.